Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you all are doing great. So far in this tutorial series we have seen how the attackers can gain access to the passwords traveling from one machine to the other machine inside a network. In this particular video we are going to see how we can uh, provide security to our data with the help of encryption and using open source techniques. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to use a tool which is called as GPG or which stands for GNU PG that is GNU Privacy Guard. But before that, we should understand what is pretty good privacy encryption which you might be aware of. I will just give you a brief introduction or brief description of what is PGP. For example, the uh, emails which you send from one computer to the other computer. That particular email is being encrypted with the help of PGP. PGP not only encrypts emails, it also encrypts the data which is flowing from one machine to the other machine. This PGP stands for Pretty Good Privacy which was developed and created by well-known company called Symantec. So over the course of nearly three decades, PGP has been developed which was continuously being improved and further updates were being provided. But the major drawback of PGP was it, it's not open source. So what exactly happens is a common person might not be aware of all the features of PGP. That's why keeping this in mind, a few uh, researchers came into the picture and they came up with the open version or the open source version of PGP, which is called as open PGP. Open PGP has many distributions. One of those distribution is known as GPG, that is GNU Privacy Guard. So in this particular experiment, there are a few steps which we are going to perform hands-on. So let's gear up, start your Kali Linux machine, pause the video over here, start up your machine and then come back. Then we'll start with the experiment. If you're having any issues installing the Kali Linux machine in a virtual environment, I would request you to kindly check out my previous videos. Uh, you will see the description in the top cards over there. You can click on the card and go back to the prerequisite video. You will come to know how to exactly install a Kali Linux virtual machine inside a Windows OS machine. Furthermore, if you're enjoying my videos and want to learn further about new technologies and advancements, do hit the red subscribe button on the right hand side and also press the bell icon to stay in touch with all the future updates. Your comments also mean a lot to me. So whenever possible, do drop in your comments and feedback so that I can keep on updating my content for you. So let's get back to the topic. Uh, these are the steps which we need to carry out the experiment. So very first step, you all know, uh, let's go back to our Kali machine. The very first thing is we need to install some packages. Uh, in our case, the package is GPG. So let's uh, see how to install it. I have uh, provided all the commands in the description box. You can download the files from uh, my website. I will give you uh, give the link of my website over there in the description box. Kindly download the file and start with the experiment. Okay, so let's uh, get back to the Kali machine. This is the very first uh, command you all know how to install any particular package. In my case, the package is already installed. So uh, it will take around three to four minutes depending upon the internet speed. It will install all the packages for you. Uh, the very first step is done. Let's go back to the second step. I will quickly run you through all these steps and then we will see how to actually perform these steps in practice. Uh, so let's uh, start with the step number two, which is generation of keys. As you all know, to carry out any public key cryptography, we need a set of keys, a public and a private key. If you are encrypting with the public key, then it is expected that we should decrypt the message with the private key and vice versa. So in our case, let's generate the pair of keys using these steps. The step is GPG space uh, hyphen hyphen gen hyphen key. Using this, we will generate a pair of keys that is one public and one private key. Next step is uh, from the keys generated, we are going to extract the key and save it in a file called as public.key. So before that, uh, let's see this particular command. We are exporting the public part of the key 
for a particular user you will see what exactly is this username when we will perform the first two steps so we'll see uh, later how exactly uh, the username comes into picture step number four is quite similar in this step we will be exporting the private part of the key and store it in a file private.key next step is after storing the values of public and private keys in the respective files we need to import the public and private keys for encrypting the message right because for encrypting any message we need the public and private pair so in our case step number five will be importing the public part of the key from the file public.key similarly step number six will import the secret part or the private part of the key from our file private.key now till here we have ex uh, exported the public and private parts of the keys now step number seven onwards we are going to make use of those keys for encryption as well as decryption so step number four is nothing but uh, listing the keys that is whichever keys you are having step number seven will display all those keys public and private parts then step number eight is nothing but it will be listing you the private parts of those keys step number seven will list you the public parts step number eight will list you the private parts okay step number nine is nothing but the actual encryption part the most important part is step number nine using this command a particular file can be encrypted which can later be then sent to the receiver either by email or by whatsapp whatever means of communication you prefer basically what we need to do is instead of sending a file in plain text format we are encrypting that from our end and sending that encrypted file to the receiver so without using any third party encryption software we are simply using this gpg package to encrypt the message at our end and then we are expected to send that encrypted package or encrypted file to the receiver who will then use the same key to decrypt their part so as a result uh, the receiver should be having the key that arrangement can be done with the help of diffie hellman key exchange algorithms you might have uh, heard about it if not i will give you a reference in the comment section also uh, in the description box you can just go through that document and understand what exactly is diffie hellman step number 10 is the very last or ultimate step that is decrypting the file at the receiver's end this can only be done if the receiver has got the same pair of keys that is public and private pair of keys that is where diffie hellman comes into picture it it makes the public and private keys available to both the sender and the receiver at the same time so let's start with the step number two onwards and see how exactly it is uh, this particular experiment is done in real time okay so the next step is we need to generate the keys for generating the keys again go back to our terminal and if if you feel it is uh, clustered so please uh, clear the screen this is the command as you can see you need to type in a name what is this name this name is nothing but your username for example i am typing in my name it will ask you for a uh, email id this is all uh, for storing purpose so that unique uh, unique keys can be generated for a particular user okay so it has created a user that is uh, my username followed by my email id so now simply press o that is okay after pressing o a prompt will uh, ask you to enter a passphrase this passphrase is nothing but it is basically a password this is the password using which you are going to encrypt the key and the same password would be required at the receiver's end for decrypting the key okay so for example i am entering a password admin123 confirm it and press enter with the help of this password the keys will be generated over here you can see these are the keys it uses rsa3072 bit encryption to generate the keys this is the rsa key and uh, this is the key in general from this key we are going to extract the public and private part okay so now let's go back to our step number three the step number three is basically about exporting the public part of the key from that rsa key we have generated in step number two so let's uh, 
go back to this particular uh, screen i have cleared the screen for you to make it more simple to understand what exactly is going on so basically over here you can see a username again this username is nothing but the name which you had provided earlier in my case it is my name only press enter what exactly will happen is it will create a file called public.key in your home directory you can check out yeah it's already present over here public.key if you try to open it it will always uh, obviously be some encrypted value you can again cross check over here if you try to open it it will say it cannot be opened because it's an encrypted file right so again go back and try with the next step that is exporting the private part of the key again it's simple uh, really simple because we need to simply check uh, change the value over here instead of export minus a it will be export secret key because this is the private part and private key is always a secret so hence go back over there paste the value simply change the username over here and this will be a private key so now what we need is it will ask you for that same password now type in admin123 and this will help you create the private part of the key again go back or you can simply type ls and check we are having the private key as well so we are done till step number four so now as i had told you step number five and six are basically about importing the keys which we are uh, going to need for encryption so import the public part first so this is your public key this part has been extracted from that rsa key and this is your public part same way you need to extract the sorry import the private part as well so simply copy this particular code and paste it over there this will be your private part okay so now we are having the public as well as private obviously this is not the private key because it's not visible it's basically a hidden key which is masked behind the public key also the next part is we need to list the keys again step number seven is copy the command paste it over here it will show you the list of keys which are going to be used clear these are nothing but the public part this is nothing but the same rsa key okay using which we are generating the public and private key pairs right similarly you can copy the uh, code for the private part okay so again paste it over there this will give you the list of secret keys again this will not be the exact secret key this is basically used to fool if any attacker tries to hack your system this will be shown as the secret key but this is not the exact secret key because that is again a hidden part clear so next move into the step number nine and 10 step number uh, 9 is the most important step because this is where the actual encryption takes place so simply paste it over here it is nothing but you can see carefully that here we need some kind of a name what name is expected this sender's username is nothing but the name which you had uh, given earlier that is nothing but your name only and in this case there is no receiver because we are just uh, implementing this on the same network so in place of receiver's name you need to type in your name only because you are using it on a local host so what exactly will happen is it is expecting some file this file is nothing but the file which you want to encrypt in our case that file is present on the desktop so i'm just providing the full complete path of the file uh, and make sure you type in the exact name of the file otherwise it may give some error okay so we are done with this if you go to the location where the file was previously present you will come to see that there is this is the original file and this is the encrypted file if i try to open it it will uh, obviously show me some encrypted value if you carefully have a look at it this is nothing but the encrypted text this is nowhere near to the original plain text okay so now let's complete our tutorial with the very last step that is decryption of the content this is basically done at the receiver's end 
Till step number nine, every uh, step is carried out at the sender's end. Step number ten will be entirely carried out at the receiver's end. Once the receiver has the pass phrase, which which is going to be used to decrypt the message back. So again, go back to the last step. I have copied the uh, command over here. Instead of this uh, my data dot tar dot gpg, you need to provide the actual name, which is nothing but demo dot txt dot gpg, and then press enter. Well, okay, it gives me an error. So this is what will happen if we don't provide the exact path of the file. As we are having the sender and the receiver on the same machine itself, we need to provide the entire local path. So what we should provide, we should type in properly the entire path that is, it is present on the desktop slash the file name that is demo dot txt dot gpg. This is what is going to be asked at the receiver's end, the passphrase or the password. In our case, it is admin123. Without knowing the passphrase, the receiver cannot open the file. This particular passphrase can be told to the receiver by either email or by WhatsApp or whatever, uh, whatever communication medium, either official or non-official you wish to use. You can use it. And voila, this is how we decrypt the message you can just cross check this this is a sample text file which we are going to encrypt and decrypt back using gnu pg this is what was present inside the file demo.txt in plain text after all these steps we are now in a position to finally encrypt the plain text and send it to the receiver where the receiver will be uh, using the same password or passphrase to decrypt the message and read the contents present inside the message. This process will not only prevent the attacker from reading the contents of the message, but it will also create a way of secure communication between the sender and the receiver without using any third party encryption software. Finally, I would like to thank you for showering your love and support, which constantly motivates me to come back stronger every single time. Keep learning, keep liking, keep sharing. See you all in the next video. Take care.